received our gathering hymn number 607. Sing a new song, hymn number 607. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning. Good morning, Father. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. Very happy that all of you can join us in prayer this morning on the fifth Sunday of Easter and also on Mother's Day. We know that all of you would love to be present here to celebrate the Eucharist on Mother's Day and to gather with the community of faith, but because of the present circumstances, you know we are unable to do that, but hopefully we will be able to celebrate together soon. In the meantime, we are happy that this is possible, that we can reach you in prayer and in celebration and gather together as people of faith. And so we turn to God our Father, we ask His forgiveness for our sins so that we might be better prepared to celebrate the mysteries of our faith. Lord Jesus, you are the way that leads to freedom from the slavery of sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the truth that reveals the tender mercy of the Father. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way that leads to the heavenly dwelling place. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
This week, we included our intentions for this Mass, special intentions for the Khan and Eamon's families, for Norris Fuentes, Jose and Jovita Martinez, Maureen Moreno, Annie Hernandez, Tressa Demer, and Jacqueline Boudreau, and also for the repose of the souls of Felix and Rosa Himmins. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new and holy baptism may under your protective care bear fruit and come to the joys of life eternal through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men filled with the spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was accepted by the whole community. So they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit. Also, Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him, a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith. But for those without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, a stone that will make people stumble, and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. According to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him, and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? 
Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else... Believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you. Whoever believes in me will do the works that I do, and will do greater ones than these, because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear people, I'm sure many of you have the experience and the memory of things that happen in family life and are retold at family gatherings. One of these things is frequently brought up for discussion. How the older children in the family are restricted severely to their behavior, to rules and regulations, and as time passes, the younger children are maybe a little more permissive. They're given a wider scope of behavior and activity. And this is indeed a cause of discussion between older and younger members in the family. Hopefully, as it's retold, it brings laughter and some joy and happiness in recalling those memories. And more often than not, out of those experiences uh, grows a loving, caring family that really just watches out for each other throughout their life. If that doesn't always happen, it's always the prayer of the mother in the family that this would be the case. And so it's not unusual for us to turn to Scripture when we uh, read the Acts of the Apostles and find that in the origins of the Church there was some division and some dissension. And we see in today's first reading that the widows were complaining that they were not taken care of and that there was something that they were missing in the distribution of food or of goods or whatever was being shared by the early church. And the good thing about it was that it was noticed and that those who were in charge, the apostles, gathered together and they said that this must be remedied. We must find a solution to it. And out of that dissension and out of that division came something wonderful, the ordination of the deacons, holy men that were taken from the community and were asked to devote themselves in prayer and in service and in ministering the Word of God. That added greatly to the number of people 
that were converted in the early Christian church. Their help was enormous. It helped to do all of the wonderful things that we are reminded about in Paul or in Peter's letter to the Romans and in the Gospel of John. It reminds us of the formation of the people of God to be a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy people, a nation set apart for God that would lead people out of darkness into the light that would help to reveal that presence of God to others. And my dear people, we continue to have that responsibility. Not just the deacons, but also everyone who is baptized into the community of faith. We are called to be evangelizers, to reach out to others and to help them understand that presence of God in their life, to help them focus on God's love and God's plan of salvation. In the Gospel reading, we are reminded that uh, Jesus was departing his disciples and that he was going to prepare a place for us. And the beginning of that preparation begins here on earth for Jesus and for all of us. He tells us in the Gospel that he is the way, the truth and the life and that you and I are called to embrace that message, to have Jesus as the centre of our life, the guide in our behaviour, in our actions, in the way we live, in the way we act, and to be the one that comes to us as we come to him to give us hope and strength and consolation. It is in the church that we find that hope and strength and consolation, and especially during these days and during this time. We gather in faith without having the real presence at our disposal to receive it and to have it part of our lives. But we have the Word of God, the Word that guides us, that influences us, that gives us direction. This time, we dearly need that presence of Christ in our lives. We need it for our wisdom, for our guidance, for the direction that we have been invited to take and to take care of others, that the Word of God calls us to charity and to service. And so, my dear people, uh, out of great difficulty and out of this pandemic, God will guide us and give us new insights and give us a new life and help us appreciate the gift of faith, the gift of that presence of Christ in our lives, the gift of the people around us, the gift of our parents, and especially on this day, the gift of our mother. We pray each time we gather to Our Lady of Guadalupe to intercede for us and to help us during this time. We are very mindful of that presence of motherhood in our lives and we thank God for the gift of his mother. And so, dear people, today we have an opportunity 
to reflect on how we can learn from what is happening, to make it a gift of charity, of love and of service in our lives, and to renew us in faith and in our spirit, to prepare us for that infusing of the Spirit at Pentecost as we look forward to that feast day. Trusting in the Lord, who promised that he would prepare a place in his Father's home for all his disciples, we bring our prayers before God. For the Church, that we may find ways to both preach the Word and serve our neighbor, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For elected leaders, that they may serve with humility all the people in their care. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those sick with COVID 19 and those who live in fear, depression, or anxiety during this pandemic crisis, that they may know God's love and compassion through our care and the service of all medical professionals, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our Lord. prayer. For mothers, grandmothers, godmothers, and expectant mothers, that they may know the value of their nurturing presence in the love of their families, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have asked us to remember them in prayer and their intentions. This weekend we pray for the repose of the souls, of special intentions for aunts and aunts' families, Nora Cifuentes, Jose and Jovita Martinez, Maureen Moreno, Annie Hernandez, 
God of all, you sent your only Son to a sinful people, and he shows us the way back to you. Help us always to keep his way firmly in our sights as we make these prayers to you in his name, Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Take this, all of you, and eat 
similar way in some of the he took the chalice once more and thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal power, which will be poured out for you and for men, for forgiveness of sins. With this,
Lamb of God, we want him who takes away the sins of the world. Let's go to us call to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. Please join us in singing our communion hymn number 663, Lord of All Hopefulness, number 663. God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten 
begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. Amen. May he who by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Please join me in praying our prayer to Our Lady of Guadalupe at this time. Our Lady of Guadalupe, in these times of tribulation, we turn to you, O Mother, see with compassion the suffering of your beloved sons and daughters, affected by the coronavirus and heavy throughout the entire world. Blessed be the Lord. Number 686. 